let's talk about influence in a marketplace, especially today with the digital economy that exists. The opportunity to reach people from around the world is easier than ever before. And how do we utilize that? And how do we reach potential employers, potential investors, potential clients in today's world? I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations, where we talk about building your influence, positioning yourself as an expert, and then ultimately growing your inf- your business relationships. Now, when I say business relationships, we're talking about the interactions that you have every day. We want them to be enjoyable. We want them to be profitable. We want them to ultimately lead to something. So we, we do cover a little bit of career development, but the business owners and executives who are part of the programs that we offer here at Inside Strategic Relations tend to want to have influence in a marketplace. They want to be seen as, as influencers. They want to be seen as thought leaders. They want to be the go-to choice when an organization has problems. And, and that's because the, when you're looking for a job, it's very difficult right now. There's a lot of layoffs. Um, there's a lot of problems that businesses have that they didn't have two years ago or 10 years ago. And they're looking for specific solutions in a world where there's a lot of distractions. And so how do we get out there in front of our our hiring managers, the recruiters, our prospective customers, and how do we get out there in a way that is positioning us as an expert? Now, I've talked about podcasting, writing reports, writing a book, uh, being a keynote speaker, uh, publishing other, other forms of publishing, uh, answering questions with prospective customers, building your business network. And, and rightfully so, many subscribers say, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, they don't have the time. They don't have the necessary resources. Um, they're frustrated with this and they want to streamline it to one simple thing. But unfortunately, a lot of folks struggle because they're looking for the one simple thing when it is hard work. Now, we have a three by three method or a five by five method where you pick three uh, approaches to building your credibility in the marketplace, three approaches to generating or creating customers, uh, three approaches to getting hired at the next opportunity, and then we apply those approaches to three different mediums. Now, the three by three approach creates nine channels that most cases consistently deliver new customers, new business opportunities, new career opportunities, consistent uh, uh, improvements, uh, residual or passive income through being an, a recognized expert. Um, but you don't go to the five by five method, which creates 25 channels until you have the systems in place for the three by three. Now, how do we implement the nine channels? Because nine is a lot. Well, we start with three. We start with one thing, three markets, or three things, one market. What are these things that we're talking about here? Well, I'll give you what I do. Now, just because I do it doesn't mean you should do it because there's different approaches. I enjoy speaking. I enjoy dialoguing with clients and people who are on my mailing list. I, I have a evaluation approach to things where I can sit down and, you know, help define a problem and drill down into root cause and then come up with corrective actions. I have packaged methodologies to solve problems. And so I take more of a consultative approach. So you could be different. You could be an individual contributor in an organization looking for ways to increase your value. Uh, You could be an executive uh, and and have a leadership position. Uh, You could be a a middle manager that has to do a little bit of of, uh, contribution uh, as an individual contributor and a lot of uh, uh, small team leadership. So again, I'm going to describe some of the methods that I use and then reveal to you the complexities that are required to maintain these methods, as well as some tips and ideas to speed up what you're doing to to make it more efficient. So first off, I create this podcast. Now, this isn't the only podcast I create, but it's one activity that's distributed over multiple mediums. Now, I'm far beyond the 3x3 method or the 5x5 method. I've got the podcast goes out on uh, 35 different channels. So uh, any one of those channels might have a very small number of viewers, but because of marketing automation or other types of automation, I can record a podcast like I'm doing right now, and it will go out on YouTube, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, you know, anywhere podcasts are. So it's a one by, in that case, I just gave you four opportunities. Uh, plus it goes on the website. So it's a one by five in that case. One thing that I do that has 
five channels, 35 channels that it goes out on. Now, is podcasting right for everybody? Not necessarily, because the podcast needs to be primarily educational slash entertainment, so like edu- edutainment. I'm not that entertaining of a guy. I'm not telling you jokes. My storytelling needs some work. But as far as communication skills, it gives me the opportunity to practice and implement my evolution of speaking. So I've spoken in front of audiences. I've I've done a podcast for more than 10 years now. And you might be listening and saying, well, you know, his public speaking skills are not that great. You know, his choice of words sometimes goes over people's heads. He seems like he's hopping around. But imagine how much garbage I was putting out there five years ago or even 10 years ago. Now, the podcast reaches a significant number of people and there's a percentage of individuals who I'm a perfect match. So the podcast fits their modality for receiving information, but it also fits the personality that's necessary to consider me for a hire, to, to hire. And so in that podcast, I have what's called bounce back offers. Every podcast offers you as the listener an opportunity to get more information or to get additional resources. So I'm not telling you you got to hire me for something. I'm just saying, hey, look, if you liked what we talked about today or you have questions about it, I'm here to answer your questions. Now, do I get flooded with questions? No. Ever since I started doing this at my past level of speaking, at my past level of engagement, I get about the same number of inquiries. So somebody will go to the website and they will write in a message and ask a question. And I'll record another podcast or I'll send them an email or I'll talk to them on the phone and address the questions that they have. But I always do it in a way that creates an artifact. And that's very important. This podcast is an artifact. When you do the three by three method, every one of those three things you do to increase your exposure in the marketplace in front of hiring managers or the opportunity or the interviews that you do, um, those need to be repeatable. And so recording the podcast once allows me to syndicate it many times, even historically. And so ultimately, that's why I choose the podcasting. Um, Another element is the offer I put in place is not a hard offer. I'm not saying, you know, buy now or, or subscribe today because I don't want people who are spontaneous in their purchase decision. I want people who are thoughtful and reflective. And at my price point, because I'm looking to be hired, for companies, either as a consultant, as a statutory employee, or as a corp to corp. So when a recruiter listens to this, they they need to understand that I know what I'm talking about in the specific areas I claim to have expertise. They need to basically understand my general availability or how to get on my waiting list for potential availability. I do get probably 15 to 20 calls every month, not just emails, but actual phone calls Hey, Justin, I've been following your podcast. I've seen your content on a website. I I see you on LinkedIn. Uh, Are you open to opportunities? And the majority of the times, I am not open to opportunities because I'm already engaged with a private client who I picked up some other way or I picked up through the podcast or I picked up through my book or or the other things that we're going to talk about. So again, uh, I ask people, this. I say, hey, look, if you have questions about what I've covered today and you want to uh, increase your value book, your value position in a marketplace so that you get more career opportunities, more business opportunities. So you're ultimately a desired candidate. Then visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Go to the contact page and ask your questions. So now I get someone who types into a web browser to goes to my website. I don't necessarily know where they came from. I don't know what podcast episode they listened to. I don't know what channel they heard from me on. I don't know if they were referred from a friend. I just know that they typed in because of the analytics on the website. And so now I have a type in that I need to qualify. So I'll get somebody on a call and I'll ask how they heard about me. I'll have a survey for them to fill out. I'll do something to gather more information about their problems and challenges. And this works out very well for me because the primary, uh, my primary time is spent serving clients. So if you're a busy, a busy business owner or busy executive, we want to find in the three by three method, uh, ways that we can create something that can be used many times that artifact, something that allows us to get feedback on our time. So we're returning messages rather than answering phone calls We're we're, we're being time effective. And that ultimately delivers a continued value because we're able to expand within the scope of the people who want to connect with us. 
Now, I'm not going to go into the uh, to, to other methods other than what I described here. The podcast gives me an ability to communicate, puts me in front of audiences. I write materials, and if you ask the question, where do the materials come from, they very often come from outlines that were used to create the podcast, and then transcripts of the podcast or my newsletter create the reports. So I wrote the book, uh, uh, What Is It That You Want and How Do You Get It? I think that's the summary title of it, and it's basically a packaged form of my initial consultation that I use for everybody. If I am at a conference and someone sits down to me with me and says, what is it that you do? And I say, what I do is blah, blah, blah. What I do is, is help high income professionals, business owners, and entrepreneurs transform business relationships into profits. Very often they'll respond and say, how do you do that? Well, it depends. Tell me about your situation. Because I don't want to go rambling on about me. I know everything about me, but I don't know about this other person. So I can't tailor my message. Remember, communications is very important. You must be able to communicate clearly to the audience who can buy what it is that you have to offer. So they'll say, well, here's my problems, here's my challenges. And I can say to them, you know what? Give me your email address. I will send you a copy of my podcast that discusses that particular idea as well as a special report that I, I put on that topic later. And then if you like, to, we can just give you a little summary of what I do or, what, or how we might approach that. Nine times out of 10, the person says, yes, please, thank you, because I position myself as an expert. And where did I get that model? I got that model from a doctor's office. You go to a doctor with a problem. You tend to talk to other people when you have problems, but you go to the doctor who has a problem. They don't just give you a solution. They don't say, oh, you come in and say, doctor, my head hurts and my foot hurts and I've got diarrhea. And the doctor doesn't say, here, take this pill and come back to me next week. They don't say, wait, 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 don't tell me. Take this pill, come back next week. See, doctors are going to have that consultation. They're going to find out if the problems are related to each other. They're going to find out what's the history. Now, if I meet somebody at a conference and they ask me a question, it's more of a conversation. And at the end of the conversation, I'll usually get their business card and then I'll follow up and say, hey, hey, we talked about the challenge you're having with cash flow in your business. Here's a copy of my cash flow report on that particular topic. If you need help, let me know. I'm in consulting. Here's what I do. So do you see what we're doing here? On that three by three, we're trying to establish three consistent ways in which we create and keep profitable customers, whether that customer is a new job opportunity, whether it's a new client for your business, or it's a sale for a widget that you offer. And so I use a, so all three of these methods have to be complementary to each other. Uh, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into third method here because we're, we're running up on the time. If you want to know different ways to get in front of customers in a credible way, I have a program called 101 Strategies for More Profitable Customers. Now, again, I say profitable customers because I see myself as serving people and everyone I work with in in a monetary capacity or in an influence capacity is a customer or a client. So if I'm volunteering at an organization, that is a client of mine and I am serving them. And as long as that relationship is mutually beneficial, it will continue. The same thing as I'm working for an employer. The same thing if I'm working for a private client. I don't make a differentiation, but I have created a list of 101 strategies. So in a three by three method, you essentially go through the list and you say, oh, I can use this one, this one, and this one. And you limit the activities you're doing because you have a time constraint. You have a resource constraint. So the biggest problem people have today is they'll see something on LinkedIn and they'll try that and they'll see something on a certain platform and they'll try that and they see a new social media network and they'll try that. You don't need to try all that stuff. Now, because you're creating artifacts, you can recycle those artifacts like I recycle my podcast into special reports and then I use my special reports when I'm at conferences or in events as a calling card rather than just having a a quick conversation because I sincerely do want to learn more about the individual, their challenges, their concerns, their needs, because it gives me introspective about how I can solve problems for private clients. I'm not trying to solve their problem, but I'm gaining context and understanding because a client who's paying me a hundred thousand dollars a year, $200,000 a year, or $50,000 for a consultation, um, they deserve the investment I make in relationships to either deliver them a solution through someone else or to deliver them a solution through my engagement. The key here, though, is credibility matters. So I've got to do those three things. In my case, again, it's more than three things. Um, I got to do those things efficiently in a way that positions and in a way that ultimately delivers value to some audience. So let's focus on how we do that because this is the implementation part. 
All the ideas don't matter. You know, whether you're doing a, a YouTube channel or you're doing a podcast or you're writing books or you're writing columns for your trade association or you're participating in a network event or whatever. You have to do it in a way that over time reduces the amount of time and attention and resources necessary to maintain the activity. Because again, a lot of folks wait till they get laid off before they look for the next opportunity. They wait till they get fired. They wait till their company fails before they find the next opportunity. A mentor of mine uh, made it very clear. He looks for new work every month. That's why he gets three to five job offers a year. Now, he stayed with the same organization for 20-some years because the job offers he was getting didn't match the value he was creating already in the mutual relationship he had. But at least he knew. There was no wondering. He could focus 100% of his attention on the company he worked for rather than uh, the possible opportunities that are outside. But every time he'd go out and look for a job, he was establishing credibility in the marketplace. He was uh, developing connections and relationships. He was opening new doors Another mentor of mine goes to conferences every year inside of his industry. He shows up in a tuxedo. He shows up ready to do presentations about the products and services that he offers, mainly demonstrations. And he's always willing to answer people's questions and show them how his solution is superior to any other solution out there and has even converted competitive companies to bring on his company's product line. He doesn't do 100 things. He does three to five things really well. Now, in an ultra-competitive world where you have a global marketplace and where outsourcing is rampant in the large corporations and how you can get laid off at any time, you are going to have to expand once you've packaged and organized the things you do into systems. I have a program called Staffing Arbitrage, and this is the simple concept of the program, is that you have a procedure that creates profitable customers. So my podcast, for example... I record the podcast, and then I have staff syndicate it. Now, I'm writing the content. I'm writing the outlines. I'm doing all the preparation, but I use marketing automation, uh, administrative assistants, and other people to make sure those podcasts are going out to where they need to go, and then I'm using analytics and metrics to know which channels bring in the right amount of people, and then when I have people typing in, I use software to do surveys, and then when they schedule a paid appointment, they go through one channel, and when I, they schedule just a call, they go through another channel, but they essentially end up on my calendar, they end up in my email or fax, and then they ultimately get serviced through some kind of administrative procedure. I know you're listening to that saying, well, God, Jesus Christ, you got a, a whole big business going on there. It's not as complex as it sounds because a lot of this can be proceduralized into a plan. And so when I talk about staffing arbitrage, I want to make sure that the, the staff are working in a profitable way so that I can scale if a, if a project comes in. So for example, even as an employee, if a consulting opportunity comes in, such as uh, to write a report, to do research, and that research report comes in, there's someone who's helping me with the research, there's someone helping me with the organizing of the document, and I'm developing the plan and implementing the plan for creating some kind of uh, report or, or commissioned paper. That doesn't take away from my daily activities because it's maybe two to three hours a week where I may have 40 to 50 service hours in place from my staff. So I'm not going to hire that staff and keep them around all the time if I can have a system that I plug the staff into, and it could be subcontractors, it could be, like today, it's artificial intelligence, it could be a, a research tool that maybe my client doesn't know exists or doesn't have the financial services to to uh, to uh, use for a short-term project. It could be assets in my network. Here's the bigger point. I get the money first. I, I quickly ramp up the staff necessary because I have pre-existing relationships. I deliver the product. There's no long-term residual uh, engagement other than what feeds the podcast, the, the reports, and the speaking events. Now, in the in the case of a commissioned report, there is a five-year embargo on the majority of these reports unless we uh, we agree ahead of time because sometimes they want me to market the report. But again, I have to look at my private clients. And so if you're an employee and you're concerned about the conflicts of interest and you're concerned about the time and materials, then you may want to check out 
the staffing arbitrage program because it can be today with the way the economy is and the way that the global services are is that you can can still contribute something, the valuable part, the 20% that makes 100% of the value or 80% of the value while backfilling everything else. And now some people call this a side hustle or whatever, but it's not something you have to be doing all the time. So in your job, you may have a special project that comes up. So I've worked with organizations who, who in addition to my full-time job, wanted to pay me for a special project. And so we go do the special project and then it wraps up and goes away. Again, that's communication skills. That's project management skills. That's the ability to package what it is that's unique about what you do so that either your existing employer or some other employer will want it or some corporation who can pay you direct through a freelance opportunity. I said a lot of recruiters contact me through the podcast. Well, how do they know the podcast even exists? Well, the podcast show up on LinkedIn. Periodically, somebody will take the transcript of a podcast that's popular, create articles. Those articles get posted on my blog, and then they also get posted on the on the LinkedIn. Those articles are within the context of my program, Establishing Instant Credibility, which talks, in, and I'm just giving you the summary of it because I don't expect you to go out and invest in all these things. You, you may not even know these concepts exist, but essentially all these artifacts uh, come together to produce other things. So I record the podcast one time, I give it my very best, and over over the time I improve, but ultimately that recruiter, that hiring manager, that that per- procurement manager, that person in the marketplace can listen to it on their time and say, well, maybe I want to hire this guy. Maybe I want to get Justin's insights and education. I could hire, I could buy a special report for a fraction of what it would cost to hire his services. I could hire his services, but he's not available right now. So I could hire him on a consultative basis, depending on availability. Click a link, schedule, move forward. So what I'm describing to you here is, is developing around yourself artifacts that position you as an expert or at least a value-added player in a marketplace. A means of communicating with high-value players who can hire you, who can influence opportunity or can otherwise be part of your network. Look for individuals that you can serve, individuals who can be a part of your network. So when a recruiter calls me, for example, and they say, I've got this uh, risk management position, and I say, well, thank you very much, I, this is what most people do. They say, thank you very much. I'm very happy where I'm at. No, I don't do that. I say, look, I'm very happy where I'm at, but tell me more about this opportunity because someone in my network could benefit from it. And then very often I'll refer that person that I know I have a mind of who it is. I'll get them the information about the role. And if they're interested, they'll reach out to the, to the recruiter. Very often I can syndicate an opportunity to three to five people. And now that recruiter sees me as a valuable asset, as well as these individuals in my network see me as someone who can connect them with outside opportunities. And I've had situations where, where managers have gotten jealous of this and they've come to me and they said, look, you're, you're too aggressive. You're, uh, you know, people are scared of you. Uh, you're so opinionated. Um, you're an arrogant bastard, all this stuff. But I see in the connections with individuals who will reach out to me to ask for my advice who are, who are open up new opportunities, especially at the senior and executive level of an organization who will trust me to do things such as board level reviews and uh, work with regulators, not because of who I am as an individual necessarily, because they don't know that. You can be the very best person at what you do, but if the hiring managers, the recruiters, the the, uh, competitive leaders in the marketplace don't know who you are, then you're invisible, like literally invisible. Now, of course, you know this is true, and that's why a lot of these companies like LinkedIn and Google, and and they're trying to make you to become an influencer or a creator, but anybody making a serious income today, and that could be just two times the average income for your area. My clients are are around the world. I've worked with people in Saudi Arabia. I've worked with people in Australia, Canada, the UK, all across the United States. Um, I do have to follow ITAR because what I'm discussing is... um, business optimization, it's competitive advantage. And so I have to follow um, the U.S. laws because I'm located in the United States. But ultimately, if if I can't follow U.S. laws, I can refer you to somebody in your home country because I build a network of individuals who can transform business relationships into profits, who have value and opportunities. That's why I don't mind listening to you about who you are and what you do. I keep track of that stuff. Now, in many ways, 
you can do the same thing. You can use the three by three method. So one of the three one of the three ways that you connect with people who can hire you is through your business network. And so you cultivate that network. I use podcasts because that's I'm used to speaking a lot. I do that's what I do. I do presentations and training. I do uh, strategy sessions. I work with. Um, I, I one time I managed two groups of technical leads indirectly. I wasn't their actual manager. I had dotted line relationships with these two groups. One group was 25 or so uh, Unix systems administrators. These are leads. Some of them had 10 people on their team. Some of them had 20 people on their team. And then, of course, the Windows administrators. And we were solving deficiencies in an IT services environment, uh, deficiencies among 40, 50,000 servers. And I would have to influence their behavior, focus their attention, and I did so through reporting, through one-to-one conversations, and then syndicating success stories. So my three things were to get this project done was provide them accurate reports about what work needs to be done, critical work, you know, defects in the environment, to collect their stories and make put them on a pedestal and show everybody else in these groups how we'd have 100 people on the call, 150 people on a call focusing on the success this group had and why that success is so important. Now, if we talk about the psychology of that, there's a lot of reasons why this was very useful, but ultimately it wasn't me solving the problem. It was this person in partnership with me solving the problem. And then finally, we would use uh, other methods so that we could optimize our performance. It's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today, but it's an idea that shows you how focusing on two or three things, Getting three solid things down in an organized method, procedurizing it, often gives you a syndication effect so that you can influence the behavior of others, so that you can get the right work done, so that you can position yourself inside the organization and outside the organization, and so that you can be someone of value in front of the right people. Nothing that I teach is about being popular. I am the least popular person. Like I said, I've had managers come after me and be angry with how I interact with other people where five other managers just love it and I'm getting stuff done. And then a bunch of individual contributors, hundreds of them are involved in presentation. I, I do a presentation, 70 people on the call. Now, again, I'm not saying this to brag because sometimes organizations will get a bunch of people on the call and it's ineffective. But the kudos I get from senior level executives, the, the feedback I get from individuals in my network, the opportunities that show up on my doorstep are not organic. They don't happen by chance, and that's what I'm trying to convey for you here. You don't have to do 100 things, but you need to do a few things that are easily to syndicate. So so you do in the podcast example. I do the podcast. It goes out in front of thousands of people, and of those thousands of people, a small percentage of them are qualified to do business with me, and even smaller percentage are willing to do business in the, in the terms of which I'm looking for, and depending on my availability, it could be one or two organizations that are ready to hire. In some cases, it could be even more. But rather than chasing people, I'm creating value in the marketplace. You can do the same. It doesn't have to be a podcast. Again, it could be speaking in front of a group. It could be a publication you write within your trade. It could be a brown bag luncheon you do at your office. But in order to manage your time more effectively, the peak performance side of what we teach, uh, you want to do it in a way that creates artifacts. You want to do it in a way that, that allows you to keep coming back to the market. You want to do it in a way that improves your skill set so that you can do this more efficiently. You want to do it in a way that gets you the results that you're looking for. And in summary, I probably should say, you know, if you're going to just keep your head down and be the very best at what you do, you're missing the opportunity to market what you do in a way that influences other people. And maybe that's why you haven't had the influence that you desire. Maybe that's why you've been passed over for promotions. Maybe that's why you're still at the same company and inflation-based, you're earning less money than you did when you started. Maybe that's why they can hire new people who have less experience, less performance, less insight to the results that the organization wants, and pay those people more. If you've ever been in a situation where your manager, you are ended up doing your manager's work because your manager's incompetent, or you end up your manager is is relying on you excessively to do bigger things in the organization, but you're not getting recognition, I want to tell you that you're in the right place. I've outlined for you here an approach. It's just one of many approaches, but it is an approach 
kind of a mindset shift that gets you started. Position yourself as an expert in a marketplace. And that doesn't have to be a big giant marketplace. It can be a very narrow focused marketplace. Creating artifacts that reinforce that positioning and then ultimately implementing in a way that puts you where you need to be for the opportunities to come to you. Now, in doing this, you will find ways to cultivate opportunity and then you have the resources to redirect towards the right people for that opportunity. So this is not just, you know, if you build it, they will come. It's a developmental approach to making you more valuable, actually more valuable in the marketplace, not seen as more valuable, not the imposter syndrome where you feel, you know, you're more valuable, but you don't feel like it. The actual reward of organizations thanking you for a job well done, opening up new and special opportunities for you, and then ultimately drawing you forward. in You'll create such a demand for what you do that you'll be pulled into opportunities where now you've got to start making decisions. And I'll tell you one-on-one, and hopefully the recruiters don't hear this, but I get a little kick out of being so busy in a great opportunity that I can't move on to something else. Because I'm so passionate and enjoying what it is that I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting fulfillment beyond the financial means. That when a recruiter comes, I, I love to listen to the opportunity. Again, because I'm passing that through my network. Because there could be someone else. And you know, every job changes. You could love your job today, but tomorrow something can change. Layoffs, uh, organizational change, threats of layoffs, uh, economic change, market change. But I really enjoy that implementing what I just shared with you here today, and, and again, I'm not bragging, I'm, showing, I'm just showing you, if I can do it, you can do it. Ultimately, I've helped many clients do it as well, but to have an opportunity show up, that's a great opportunity, but your opportunity that you're working on is even better. So you can't take it, but if you wanted it, it's yours. That's the power of strategic relationships. That's what I mean by transforming your relationships into profits. It profits them because if I'm not ready to take the opportunity or it's not a good fit for today, I usually know somebody in my network it's a better fit for and I'll pass it along. So I'm helping the people in my network and I'm helping the people who are are asking for me. And sometimes people will say, I'll wait. Just give me a call when you're ready for the next opportunity. It does build that self-esteem, but it's an internal build. It's not someone outside praising me for how smart I am. In fact, many times I'm called an idiot. Uh, people will look at me and they'll say, I don't, well, why is he doing it that way? That's the dumbest way possible. But again, I know from experience, I know from application, I know from implementation that these methods work. If you'd like these methods to work for you, I could be available to answer your questions. Yeah, I might be available for consultation. I might be available for a large project. But this message I'm sharing with you here today is an artifact that's going to be out there for years to come. So when you're ready and I'm ready and there's a match, we'll work together. Meanwhile, I I garner great satisfaction in solving problems for people. So if you have a success story that you'd like to share, maybe a particular podcast episode has really made a difference in your ability to be viable in a marketplace, even as, as corporations say you're not valuable. You know, a lot of my folks go freelance when they get closer to retirement or while in retirement, if they get bored, they do some of the things that we talked about today in order to, uh, to get better enjoyment and lifestyle. Cause again, this isn't about wealth. This is about influence. This is about becoming the person you want to be and knowing that you are valuable in a marketplace. This is about influence to change things and to, to improve things, not just for yourself, but for the people around you. And it starts with the three by three or the five by five method. I'm Justin Hitt, and this is the Inside Strategic Relations Podcast. If you'd like to have more resources or information about the resources mentioned here, visit us at www.insidestrategicrelations.com, all one word. Go to the contact page to ask your questions, or join our free newsletter. Because I have all these artifacts. i got like, like, I don't know, it's like 1,900 articles or something out there. Uh, like 100 and some special reports. I'm pretty sure I can help you solve a problem in your area that has to do with business relationships. Not only that, I can prove it to you because usually what we do is we send you a link to a podcast that's relevant to your question as well as some additional commentary relevant to the 
you know, the details of your question. And ultimately, if you want to work with us, we have people on staff or we have different services and the membership site, for example, the, the uh, paid newsletter. Um, and then, of course, the group, group coaching calls is typically what I can do when I'm engaged with a private client. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's all example. It's just study it. Look at it. I, I, and then implement it. And you will get results to transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. Not guaranteed profits, but profits in the form of, of stronger relationships, more influence in the marketplace, uh, be a higher demand individual, a s- a greater confidence in what it is that you do, systems for implementing things more consistently, lowering your risk in business, and so much more. This really isn't one size fits all, but for business owners and executives, it is a game changer. Thanks for listening. Ask your questions at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. And I'm wishing you the greatest of successes in growing the demand in the marketplace for who you are. Thanks for listening. And until next time, I'm really leaving time for the, the YouTube screen here. I'll see you later. Bye.